Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, what was that? The alarm clock. Copy, it's too early. The room's still dark. That's because the blinds are down. Oh, nonsense. We haven't got any blinds on our windows yet. Right. These are not our blinds, and they're not our windows. They're not? No. Close your mouth and open your eyes, and you'll see what Santa Claus has oh, for Oh, nothing doing. If I open my eyes, I'll wake up. You tell me what he has for me. <laughs> Good morning, David. Good morning. You know, I was dreaming we were asleep on the farm. The sun was shining in the window, and when the alarm clock rang, I dreamt it was a rooster. <laughs> I'm going back to sleep. Good. Give my love to the rooster. David, why don't you reset the alarm for ten minutes from now? It's still early. What's the use of ten more minutes? Oh, lots of use. Anyway, it won't take you as long to get to the office from here as from Eastbrook. Oh, go on, David. Indulge yourself. Let's sleep another ten minutes. All right, just ten minutes, though. And to make sure it's no more than ten minutes, I'm going to reset the alarm clock. That's all I want. Ten minutes. There. Except I don't think I can. Can what? Go back to sleep. You know the trouble with me is that once I'm awake, I'm not asleep anymore. Uh, Come again? I don't overlap. Once I'm awake, that is that. Then tell me. Uh, How do you like waking up in New York? I love it, I think. Don't you miss Eastbrook? Only when I'm asleep. Oh. Actually, my worst suspicions about myself have been confirmed. They have? I have a horrible confession to make. There I hear. You have every right to know. I am a lazy, good-for-nothing David. I love staying here at Julia and Hartley's with butlers and maids and all the rest of it. Well, you'd be a fool if you didn't. You don't mind? I'm delighted. I bet you knew it about me all the time. (laughs) Sure, that's why I married you. I love lazy good-for-nothings. David, do you miss Eastbrook? Me? Oh, I should say not. You don't? Ah, this is the life for me. I even get ten more minutes in bed in the morning. Now, what more could anybody ask? Hmm. You're not fooling? You're really enjoying this? To the hilt. I feel like on a vacation. Well, that's the way you're supposed to feel. Away from housekeeping, cleaning, cooking, carpenters, from all the... It's as bad as it sounds, darling. It's wonderful most of the time. And the rest of the time? You're home. Come here. Mm. Well, I guess I'd better get up. David, I've been trying to tell you, darling. You can't get up. I can't? No. Since when? Since last night. But I have to get breakfast. That's just it. What is? You don't have to get breakfast. Claudia, you didn't. Now, 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 David, now listen, don't get excited. You'll love it for a change. Really, you will. Go on, go on, say it. I'm not ashamed. I told Suzanne we would have breakfast in bed. Mm. There. You're kidding, of course. Why should I be kidding? Me, breakfast in bed? Of course. We're on a vacation, aren't we? You just said so, now don't take... Uh, don't darling, take I, I have to get up and shower and get to the office. I haven't got time. You're on a vacation till after <laughs> breakfast. You said so. So you will eat in bed and like it. Now, just ring that little bell over there on your night table. Suzanne will know what it means. I am henpecked. Of course you are. The bell has been rung. The rest is silence. Mmm... Breakfast on a silver tray with a lacy napkin, fine bone china, and coddled eggs. I love coddled eggs. Would it be all right for me to coddle over and brush my teeth? (laughs) Yes, darling. Go right ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're very, very very welcome. (laughs) Look, I'm all up and awake. Can't I have my breakfast sitting up at the desk? You cannot. You get right back into bed this minute. Henpecked. Hey, where are you going? You you can't get up. I'm going to brush my teeth. Do you mind? Hey, this is no life for a great big grown man. What is it? This lying around for breakfast in bed. Why don't you try to enjoy it for once? 
You afraid that you might? You are foaming at the mouth. Answer me. What are you trying to do, psychoanalyze me? Answer me. Are you afraid you might enjoy Brett Kristen Byrne? <laughs> all right, all right. You win. I am afraid. Ha! Huh. That is exactly what I suspected. And I am beginning to suspect that I married a woman. Darling, don't say anything important. The water's running and I can't hear you. You've just missed a deathless remark. What? Tell me quickly. I said I am beginning to suspect that I married a woman with female foibles. Female foibles. Mm -hmm. Well, well, well. I am disillusioned. Mm, these beds are soft. Mm -hmm. You said that already. It doesn't cost anything to say it again. Uh-oh. There's breakfast. Yes. Well, you don't have to sound like the voice of doom about it. I'll smile. How's this? <laughs> Awful. <laughs> Come in, please. Smile coming up. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. Norton. Good morning, Suzanne. I bring you breakfast. What lovely trays. Oh, here, I'll, I'll take mine. Mmm, coffee smells marvelous. Mm, wait a minute. Sit up. Yes, yes. It is better to sit up. Oh, oh all right. right. Voilà. Now, I give the other tray. Mr. Norton, if you will also sit up. Very mm. comfortable. Oh, look at those muffins. Cook thought you would like. Mm. I'll cook. I love. Anything I can bring more for you, uh, Mrs. Norton? Not another thing. Oh, well, thank you, Suzanne. Just bring when you are ready, uh, and I come. All right. Well, isn't this nice? Mm, delightful. My legs will fall asleep. Oh, they can't. Why not? Because mine won't. Mine have a tray on them, too. Well, your legs are smaller. That has nothing to do with it. It's the size of the tray that matters. Well, the fact remains. I already can't feel the big toe on my left foot. I don't believe you. Well, can you feel it? What? My big toe. Of course I can't feel your big toe, well, you dope. It's in your you bed are. halfway across the room. I don't know why I talk to you at all. Drink your orange juice. Kill joy. Kill joy is here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you think. This is nice, David. Hey, listen, would you mind holding my tray a minute? What on earth for? Oh, I want to uh, move my left. Leg a little. Oh, I see. It's I... not that I'm uncomfortable or anything. Oh, I just no. think I can balance it better. Yes. If no, I... no ex explanations necessary now. Let's see now, if you. Oh, I know. Hmm. If you put your tray on the floor, all you have to do is just reach over and. Well, maybe and... I can hold yours and balance mine at the same time. <laughs> be careful. All right now. now. Look awfully... Now hand me, hand me your David, tray. David, listen. You'll have to be very careful. I poured my coffee hand it over. already. Hand it over. I said. All right. There now, you got it. Yeah, my tray is balancing. Now don't perfectly. breathe or anything. Hmm. Don't oh, breathe. Here we are. Well, that is better. Oh, What's better? Out my left leg. Oh. Is it by any chance waking up? I'm still it's holding the, the tray. Painful thing in the whole world. Then you admit it. Admit what? It was asleep. I didn't say it. Did I? No, 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 no. Now here, are you ready for your tray back? Oh, just one second more, David. I just want to push this. Up well, a ready or not, here it comes. Careful, careful, careful. Oh, you gave me a scare. I think nothing of it. When I was a lad, I, I juggled seven loaded trays at one time. Oh, the greatest of ease. <laughs> now, my egg. Oh, David, see if you can push my pillow just a little more to the right. There goes my right leg. Where'd it go? Sound asleep. Oh, nonsense. Just wiggle it a little. My cat with this tray on my lap. Don't worry about it. It's only for another five or ten minutes. But that's awful. Well, I've decided to be philosophical about it. If I'm to enjoy breakfast in bed, I'm just not going to complain about it. That's all. You're right. That's the only way. That's right. And I am enjoying it. I can tell. Very much. Good. I'm glad you are. Oh, this darn pillow. You better drink your coffee, darling. It'll be cold. Julia says she has breakfast in bed every day. Well, bully for Julia. <laughs> I didn't realize she had so strong a constitution. And Hartley, too. He has, too, every morning, mm -hmm. in spite of his gallbladder. The joys of the rich. Darling, were you serious? How are your legs? Petrified. Oh. So who cares? Me, I care. Would you like to get up? Eat breakfast comfortably at a table when I can have it in bed? Why, I should say not. Oh, this is so, so relaxing. I'll be exhausted all day. <laughs> Upside, there goes your pillow again. Careful, your tray. Oh. 
David, listen, darling. I wouldn't think you were a quitter if you drank your coffee at the desk. <laughs> darling. Mm. Now, deep down, I know you. You're a country girl at heart. Just because I can't balance a breakfast tray? That doesn't prove anything. You know, it's funny. But I keep wishing we were uh, back in Connecticut. And I had a small idea that you did, too. Back in Connecticut? Mm -hmm. On our lovely farm? Right. Bluff barking, Shakespeare meowing, where the sun shines early into the bedroom because there aren't any blinds on the window? Exactly right. Where breakfast is in spite of electricians and carpenters and trains to catch, where water runs cold and the lights go out... <laughs> Where it rains and rains and rains, rains and rains. <laughs> You're right. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't prefer it to all this. You wouldn't? No. That's good. David, you are a dope. A dope? Yes, I guess I was to have bought the farm in the first place. Darling, take that look off, off your face. Don't you know yet that I prefer breakfast on the run to breakfast on a tray? And that I'd rather be a farmer's wife than an architect's wife any old day. Oh, you would, huh? I would. Well, I wish I were as sure as you seem to be. You know, you seem to uh, love all of this. Anybody rich can have all this. I just like it because it's here. But, darling, I've learned that it's a very special gift to wake up with a rooster instead of an alarm clock. <laughs> now do you believe me? Believe you? Here, come here. Come here, farmer's wife. I'm here. I'll give you a kiss that'll last as long as that rooster crows. Mention the word entertaining to some women, and they utter a weary sigh. They figure you have to go to a lot of trouble whenever you have a few people in. Other women have open house all the time. Their families never hesitate to ask friends over without advance warning. In such homes, you'll usually find the refrigerator well stocked with Coca-Cola. Then, all that's needed to make guests welcome is a bottle opener. Ice cold Coke does the rest. If you want to enjoy a reputation for hospitality easily, order a case of Coke and keep a supply on hand. The family will thank you, and so will your guests. Oh, Mr. King. Maybe you tell me, was breakfast all right for the Northern? Mm, it was fine when they finally ate it at the desk. <laughs> they are a sweet couple. Oh, we enjoy having them in the house. And they've been enjoying it, too. Uh, they will stay till Friday? Well, that's what they'd planned, but come tomorrow night, I have an idea they may change their minds. And where will they go? To the most logical place in New York, and you'll find out where it is tomorrow. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So, listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now, this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.